I will give you a tip of today's episode. We will talk about how the jelly shoes conquer the world. They build a global expansion being a Brazilian brand, which is so incredible. The first collaboration was with uh, Jean Paul Gaultier, uh, so a French brand. It was early in the 80s. So as Myra mentioned, in the 80s, talking about a collaboration from a Brazilian brand to an international designer brand. Guys, we're listening to this podcast and your brand, just like make sure that you're taking all the Tips and taking notes <laughs> because this is how you develop a global brand. It has never been easy to innovate and finding like the right way for brands to communicate. Huge fan of the way you guys are doing marketing. Yeah. How amazing to be three incredible <laughs> Brazilians, women, women, very strong, you know, very, very strong, strong episode. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Mara Genovese, I'm the founder and president of MG Power, a fully integrated marketing powerhouse, and welcome to another Influencer Marketing Uncovered podcast. And I will give you a tip of today's episode. We will talk about how the jelly shoes conquer the world. So we have the honor to host here in our studio in London, Graziele Toscan. She's a Brazilian, just let's start with that. And she's the head, she's the head of Melissa's global brand and communication. And as a Brazilian myself, I grew up with Melissa. So I have a lot of incredible memories of Melissa as a brand, as a product. My sister was the one that actually introduced me to the brand. My sister is 46 years old today and Melissa is still her number one, you know, brand when it comes to shoes. And I have so many memories of not just wearing Melissa, but also playing with the shoes of Melissa and dressing my dolls with the Melissa shoes. <laughs> so I can stay here forever talking about my memories. But Melissa is a brand that has an incredible story of touch people's feelings and emotion. And they have an identity of innovation, sustainability, collaboration, community, and they build a global expansion being a Brazilian brand, which it is, is so incredible. But we will talk a lot about that. I don't want to start spoiling our conversation. And I have here with me the incredible Helen, our senior marketing and PR man manager here at MG Power. This is the second time Helen is co-hosting a podcast with me. So welcome again now in our studio. <laughs> Thank you, Myra. Yes, very happy to be here in this amazing set. Absolutely, Myra. Melissa is an inspiring case of success and innovation and one of those unique brands that triggers memories and sensations. I've had the pleasure to work close to the brand in Brazil. So for me, it's a double nostalgic episode. Thanks for having me as a co-host and very welcome, Grazi. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here representing the brand today. So that's let's amazing. Talk about and it. not just like it's, I'm just thinking that I've just, you know, had a thought here. How amazing to be three incredible mm. Brazilians, women, women, you mm. see, like this is, just, we can change the topic. We can say Brazilians, <laughs> you know, like mm. a power mm. women, like London. Melissa M. Gino, I'm very like that. Now I just came to this realization. So with three Brazilians and a female, like what a <laughs> incredible and empowerment. Yeah. Um, very strong, you know, very, very strong, strong episode. <laughs> uh, but Grazi, first of all, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to be here with us. Appreciate it. Thank and you so much. For as I said, me. like Melissa is a brand that uh, I think, you know, not just who is a Brazilian that knows the brand, everyone that you go around, like even here in the office when today we're talking about this episode today and everyone asks, oh, who is coming today? You know, it's Graziella. She's the head of Global for Market for me. It's, oh my God, Melissa. So it's not just about being Brazilian that you know the brand. You guys, you know, managed to create a global brand, but not just that. It's a very unique product. It's a shoes-based like the material, it's a plastic material, but you can talk more about details of the material. And it's, a, it's all about innovation. So when you create, like when the brand was launched, remind me when Melissa was launched? 1979. Yes, and it's still the product, the scent, 
the way you guys work remain the same for so many yeah, more years? Yeah, it's going to be 45 years old next year. So we are planning a couple of celebrations. Amazing. But tell us, like, I think, you know, like, even for myself, because I know Helen worked with you in Brazil, but I, I always had that curiosity to understand, like, how Melissa became that global brand. Because especially in brazil there's so many brazilian brands that they wanted to have that global expansion they wanted to actually get out of brazil and had an international name but it's not an easy thing to do right not just because it's a brazilian brand but like every brand that's a local brand says like a british brand wants to go to brazil it's not as easy to become a very well known and you know desirable uh global brand tell us the story of this global expansion of melissa and how you guys did that yeah that is very interesting really so as you mentioned in brazil uh, melissa is um almost a 45 years old brand so next year it's going to be like celebrating the anniversary and um it has a lot of uh, story uh I think Melissa was like a p pioneer when talking about collaborations and that was of course like a very important door I think for the international market. So uh, the first collaboration was with uh, Jean Paul Gaultier, uh, so a French brand. It was early in the 80s so it was I think very early in the story of the brand starting connecting with those international names and um, like seeing the opportunities that we had like in the uh, expanding the markets so that said i think the um uh, regarding your question the um exportation started around uh 2005 or 2004 2005 and um it started with like uh, connecting the brand with a couple of of um, international department stores and of course the collaborations help it a lot and uh, as you said Melissa is like a very unique product Melissa leads like the global shoes uh, category and that uh, build this um, this interesting of uh, the, this interest of the people around the brand and um, like uh, trying to understand a little bit more and the curiosity, I think, regarding the brand. Uh, so yeah, today Melissa has, I think, 450 stores uh, worldwide, wow. and it is selling in more than uh, 4,000 points of sales globally. So we, uh, we are present in more than 80 countries. So it was a very interesting um, history and of course, uh, there is a lot to do still. And then just to mention here, like, as I mentioned, like, I think it's important to mention, like, uh, the material that the Melissa shoe is made. So I have here the information that is from, is a form of PVC that provides, so it's, it's a patented plastic material it is. that's called Melflex. Melflex, yes. It's a form <laughs> of PVC that provides improved elasticity, impermeability, and resistance. And is also eat poor allergic, odorless, and 100% recyclable. That's correct. Tell yes. us a little bit about the recyclable element. Because when you call like, oh, Melissa, it's a, you know, it's a shoe that's made from PVC plastic. Right. The first question is like, but how they can be recyclable and how they can be sustainable? Yeah. Yes. And, uh, well, I think first it's important to say that uh, Melissa is owned by Grandene, which yes. is the company that owns the brand. And Grandene has started the sustainability journey uh, more than 10 years ago. So it has like improving a lot in terms of the production and the materials and understanding a little bit more about the formula and how we can... Uh, improve i think in terms of the sustainable journey i think the company has done like incredible and incredible work um today grandini has the hugest um, solar panel in the Amazing. latin america and we are happy to say that all the melissa production uh is without carbon emission so the the production itself it's um 100 percent with uh clean energy coming wow. from uh, solar amazing. panels and everything is like um 
yeah, I think the, the, the production itself, it's very nice. We still have uh, a low carbon emission due to the transportation. Of, of course, course, in Brazil, we still have a lot of in-ground transportation. But I think the production, important to say, is the production itself is uh, with... Uh, no no carbon emission and talking specifically regarding the the material itself the plastic uh, the plastic the PVC Melissa has this patent uh, patented uh, material which call it which is called Melflex and uh, it has the scent the, the unique scent, bubble yes. gun scent we can talk about this uh, later but um, it is a material that can be 100% recyclable. So today, Melissa stores, especially in Brazil, they have collectors where people that don't want the, their shoes anymore, they can bring it back and that will be recycled. Uh, sometimes it's going to be recycled with local partners. Sometimes if it is like a closed location, we can uh, bring the shoes back, take the shoes back to the factory and then recycle it in the factory. So the carbon emission is also important when considering how to uh, transport the shoes back or making it locally. And uh, the material is very easy to recycle because it is just like grinding it and it doesn't need to add anything chemical in the process. That's amazing. And it can be transformed again in new shoes or new materials. So it depends really on the destination that is going to be uh made with the, those shoes but that I think it's a very important characteristic of this product yeah so and I this remember, is the I remember when I was working with you guys back in Brazil there was this conversation was started about positioning Melissa as a vegan uh, brand uh, and I remember that there were lots of conversations uh, not only about how uh, how to make it happen in a positive way because there is this whole conversation about the how much the plastic is not positive for the environment so yeah. I think this was a big challenge and also about how the consumer would um, would embrace that so now you're saying that the stores have these collecting points right is the consumer embracing that do you guys feel that this this is happening from the consumer perspective it is it is it is happen, uh, happening we had done like a first um, limited edition of a shoe that was made completely from recycling oh, shoes oh, that amazing. came back from the store so it was not much because of course we depend on the uh, consumers to bring yeah. it back uh, it was a limited edition but it was a hundred percent made from yeah. uh, the shoes uh, the post use uh, con uh, shoes so that's amazing yeah. and there's an education Educational process with all about to say, yes. the consumer as well, right? So yes. as that that that's a challenge, uh, not only the brand positioning, but also embrace having the consumer on board. On board, of course. Embrace. And you said regarding the plastic. Of course, there are a lot of conversations regarding the material. We know that. Um, it is an important conversation, but it really depends on the use that you do for the material and how you treat it the, the after use. Yeah, mm -hmm. So so what is Melissa doing is like collecting it back and bringing it back in the production. Of course, there are a lot of uh, tests that we do inside the factory to make sure that it's not contaminated and we can still use in the production in a safe way. But uh, that is like like a very nice I think journey that uh, it started and I see like a lot more to come uh, Grindin is doing like incredible moves in this uh, in this direction yes that's exciting that's very exciting Grazi one thing that you mentioned that you said that you know the global going back a little bit of the global expansion that you guys started doing international collaborations but you said that you start doing that back into in the, the 80s, the yes. 80s. And for me, this is just like, I, incredible. Because what we, what we talk now, especially what's the, like the, the overall industry for brands, like the trend or how we see now brands connecting with their consumer more and more is through collaborations is through co-creation or collaboration with designers or collaborations with influencers, collaborating with celebrities. But you guys have started doing that in the 80s. <laughs> that so, is so nice, isn't yeah. it? So what that means for me is just like, you guys are ahead of you know ahead the game time, yeah. when it comes to think you know, forward in the future. Because 
we talk a lot here now with our clients and even my talk at South by Southwest two weeks ago was around community co-creation and the importance of, you know, co-create, you know, again, not just with influencers, but with celebrities. So, and then things you've done back in the eighties is something that's became a core of what Melissa does, right? Because I can see that it's a lot of collaboration that goes around the brand. But now I see that you guys evolve for not just being doing with like international, well-known, you know, fashion designers, you know, fashion clothing, but also with the influencers. Right. Tell us a little bit like, you know, how is it a part of the core strategy of Melissa, like creating, you know, a plan of collabs between design and what what do you see the difference between of like doing a collab with a well-known fashion designer and with an influencer? What the value that one to another, you know, bring together? Of course, I think this history regarding the collaboration is, is so exciting because, mm. as I said, it started in the 80s and I think Melissa has like an incredible portfolio of brands incredible. that yeah, that had collaborated in the past, like Vivian Westwood, uh, Karl Lagerfeld and John Paul Gaultier, Campana Brothers, which are uh, Brazilian artists and that. Jeremy Scott, Comme de Garçons, and we can name like a lot of very nice uh, uh, but recently, we have done White Project on the cover, oh, uh, Colina Strada, and um, I mean, uh, I even like need to remember all the collaborations <laughs> because it's a very nice um, story. And I think um, everything start uh, starts really with uh, the brand proposition because uh, Melissa brand is built around three important pillars, which is fashion, art, and design. So everything that brand does, it's related to one of those okay. pillars. And I think that made the brand uh, being like strong and consistent along the years, because it's very hard to keep like a brand uh, relevant and, and uh, all these years, like almost 45 years. So I think all the collaborations needs to be connected at least with one of the pillars. And that helped a lot on building this history and make the brand move towards uh, this uh, global market and also having these such nice names um, collaborating. And uh, talking specifically, of course, there are a lot regarding collabs that we can speak about and how the brands uh, needs to be connected not only in the brand core values so you, you need to find someone that you can relate exactly. to because otherwise that will be very weird for the the audience and also I mean, for the brands itself, like um, finding those connections. So uh, Melissa has this uh, in mind when talking about a new collaboration. And that help a lot when we see like some connections between the brands and how the communities can integrate themselves. And then you build like a very strong project. Uh, so that is something, of course, uh, Melissa has in mind uh, when talking about collabs and talking about influencer I th influencers. Uh, so we have done many different projects with influencers. So not only launching a product developed by an influencer itself, but also a lot of ambassador marketing. So we do have a couple of ambassadors also uh, promoting the brand like in a regular uh, calendar and making these connections. Because, I mean, I think marketing has uh, always been the word of mouth. Uh, people talking about something they like yes. and then i think nowadays is this influencer approach that can lead the brands uh, to be like relevant and interesting for the audiences so i think it's very connected and it's very powerful yeah one thing that i rem i remember when i was i was working with you guys on the jeremy scott uh in brazil and the product because you were talking about how important it is for the audience to understand these partnerships as well right because you need to think about the audience you need to think about of course the brand positioning but the audience as well and jeremy scott product was a very strong product right and not mm -hmm. it was not for everybody right and it, it how 
the the consumer understands these partnerships as well that's how i felt because there is there is a consumer that is looking for this fashion uh, approach Worlds. and there is the consumer that wants the the basic the traditional yeah, yeah. The, the more traditional and how do you guys balance that uh, in terms of strategy to make sure that you have this strong position in the pillars that you mentioned, art, fashion and design, but you're also communicating with the, the audience that might not understand this product, might not always understand this product? Yeah, I think it's very nice uh, memory regarding Jeremy Scott. It was a very fun project and couldn't be better for Melissa because all the concept was regarding inflatables yeah. and the products look like <laughs> an inflatable thing. It was very nice. And um, I think the way Melissa works usually in these collaborations is to have an offer of products that can be a little bit more high end and connect with this uh, yeah. fashion uh, uh, people that are like interested in something yeah. that uh, it's a little bit more special, but we do have still a little bit more mainstream line. It's still signed by the collab, but it's more um, understandable, I think, mm -hmm. uh, for yeah. the consumer. So something that is a little bit more digestible for the for the regular consumer. So we can still offer something special for someone that is not looking for like a such a high-end product Products. but you have like both options so that is the way melissa has been doing so far and uh, i think it's very important i think in melissa we has always we have always been working with have this very st standout products that can be relevant because that creates a lot of noise regarding the brand regarding 100%. the collaboration and it's of course it's not for everybody to understand but that it's a very important marketing tool yeah. when creating awareness Especially for the international market of course because right? yes. like you oh. do because as, as the moment that you become global you're talking with different type of consumers and audience right so maybe one design is not going to fit every you know everybody, everybody. But it's still put you under the positioning because you're gonna have like I love the fact you said fashion, art, design. and design. So if you're looking for like working with a fa very fashion trained design like Jeremy Scott, so you would have the the consumers that would be interested more into that segment of you know Melissa as a as a, as a show, especially being a global brand. Yeah, definitely. But people who still can find like a flat sandal, which is a little bit more the traditional, commercial, yes. and understand and it's easy to understand, and then they could still buy something related to the collab in this way. You said community, because like we are here, like I said, like co-creation community. And again, Melissa has been doing that for such a long time. And now that the brands are coming to the realization of the importance of collaborations, co-creation, and also the power of the community. So how do you guys engage with your community? Does the community help you guys on your strategy of, okay, let's listen to what your community is saying and listening to them, understand what is next for Melissa. So how, what is the engagement look like with their community? Do you work with them as well as a part of, you know, you said collaboration, but like here to them to be part of something that Melissa is creating is something that you guys also engage? Of course, yeah. I think Melissa has grown with this community um, for many, many years. In Brazil, we call them uh, the Melissa Lovers and Meliceras. Meliceras, <laughs> And um, it has started like in very early age when I, I think I mentioned it also in the in the panel uh, during the time of the Orkut they created like a community oh my God, the Orkut, there was a community element in Orkut I right it was that. very strong yes. in Brazil on that time very strong yes. yes so they created like this community that were like for Melissa fans and it started to grow like spontaneously uh, with people joining there and talking about the brand so the, that was I think the first time that the brand became aware 
uh, a community Literally. been starting and and Organic. talking organically, organically. and then again ahead of the time because ahead like, of the time it yeah. was We're very early yeah. now yeah. these yeah. guys are doing community led <laughs> program for like and so that has been growing so far so melissa keeps like the conversation and um i think we we had also um the 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 melissa lovers day which we celebrate oh, like uh, okay. in the all the stores so we ju and we just did crazy. Easier, they, right? go they go crazy. crazy. <laughs> so they have all the a special event. We have done a special event. It was like a couple couple of week, a weeks ago in March, um, and uh, it is like a, an intense, I think, relationship because, of course, you you can have like positive feedbacks, negative, negative feedbacks. Yes. But I think this is the beautiful around it, and this is what helps the brand to to grow like in 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 many different directions. So I think most of all today, the conversation has been online, but we do have like these events also in, in, in real, real life, life to in, the, in the stores. the community yes. together and engage. So it's a balance, but uh, we hear a lot mm. of what they are saying and uh, we have already launched products that they asked for. So oh, they uh, they asked like, oh, I really love it that World Melissa that you launched like years ago. Can you launch it again? And we did. And you listen to them and, and you we, go and there we and it on that, on that occasion sometimes wow. they vote like in products that they want to be they, they want to uh, to be launched yeah. so it's uh, it's incredible I for think. sure the community has happened you happened has helped you guys to become this uh, global brand for sure of right because they should probably the like at the t because we're talking about like you start engaging community at the time of work good right so we didn't have social media like instagram or facebook or twitter so it was pretty like work good and i think the other one was i see key how to say like in portuguese like I see key. Yeah. <laughs> yes but we didn't have any other channel like for sharing that was not this yeah. true like in terms of communications and since then the brand is became like a big global brand so and now th with the community you have much more of the power for user-generated content because the community is not just there to create a conversation around their brand but they also share content about your brand in an organic way and then with the globalization world that we're living in with so many social media platforms this is how we were able to actually get your brand above and you know and beyond just one market which yeah. is uh that's the power of the community of being talking here it a is. lot and the 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 relationship between as you said grazi between this community and the brand is so it's strong, so strong. Like, it's so very powerful. intense the connection yeah. is so strong uh because we really i i remember we used to consider that as one of the 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 pillars of the audience so we have the press we have the influencers and we have the melissa lovers so what we're gonna do for this specific, specific target. Audience. Melissa yes. Love is like the fans can can become the community, but also the fans they of the brand, fans, right? Yes. They are, but they are, it's, they are it's, it's, it's a level of love passion. i don't know how to, they yeah, are passionate yeah. so because i remember some of them had like rooms in their houses in their for houses. just collecting only with boxes of are you being serious just I am, yes, and yes. it's like one Full model closet. in all the colors yeah. so we have oh this model God. in black pink white like all the models of the bag, all the models of these specific shoes and the, the special collections they had like, oh, this one I never use. Like They they have like one product that they buy for never using just to yeah. keep it like yeah. in their well, shelf. Why is that? Like what? No, I mean like because it's interesting. <gasps> what like, motivates it, What that? motivates them to actually like this I'm buying it, but I'm not using it. This because it they, be became like a kind of like a collectible it's a kind collectible. of it's a collectible yes. i always make this parallel with the conversation i always remember about melissa on, when i'm talking about nfts when people ask me why would people collect nfts i go back to melissa why would people collect collect shoes, shoes. like right. i think there's something in the human nature do you think is this about is the combination of the design and then we need to talk about the scent right because i think at the beginning of the podcast we said about the scent one thing that for me as a memory of melissa is the scent so it's very it's strong yeah it touches me a lot every time i see a pair of shoes from melissa i i smell it it takes me back to my childhood it takes me back to memories 
and it's, this is very special. So do you think this, the, the, the scent around the products is also the emotional connection? The emotional connection yeah. can there, be that passion from the Melissa lovers? There, it's, there, it's, there, hard, like, this, it's hard to it's, explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's this, hard to explain. The, this is a hard one, but I, I think it's many reasons that lead uh, a consumer to be a fan of a brand. And I think on um, regarding Melissa, it's a lot of emotional connection. It's a lot uh, of emotional connection. And I connection. think though this emotional connection came from many levels. Of course, it's very related to the childhood, as you mentioned, yeah. and because of the scent, it's like a bubblegum scent. Yes, so it it remain it uh, uh, takes you to, like to your memories and and it makes you feel like uh, home and engaged with like family and friends. So I think there is a part of this important part which is nostalgic. Um, I think also one thing that build Melissa community very strong is the. The way that the brand has always worked with uh, inclu inclusivity, and uh. and I think Melissa is not those fashion brands that is is not for you. Uh, Melissa always worked in a way that can be uh, that can build fashion as a um, accessible thing, and it's for everybody. And it doesn't mind if you are uh, in this way and in another way. You will be always welcome in the brand. And I think this sense of being welcome and being part of something and uh, being weird sometimes <laughs> makes people feel very connected Actually, with yeah. the brand. Guys, I'm sorry, but like the scent is an innovation that everyone is like never thought about and you guys did the first. The community and now the diverse element that, again, this is a new thing that brands are thinking of. Like if you look at catwalks, right? right? So two years ago, what happened with Victoria's Secret where like they had to stop doing the shows because there was no diverse on, you know, body shapes and, you know, skin color. And out of sudden, a lot of fashion brands, they have to change the direction and they start having the diverse on the control. But you guys have done everything that every brand is doing now. You have done. very that early. Very early. <laughs> like very early. guys, we're listening to this podcast and your brand, just like make sure that you're taking all take the notes. tips and take taking notes. notes. <laughs> because this is how you develop a global brand, right? So you're typing into pillars that is so like every time we brainstorm with clients, we go and say, like, it, you cannot run away from add diversity into what you're creating on your marketing plan, on your product. You cannot run away from engaging with the community, uh, co-creation, and also the scent. So you, Melissa, managed to create that element, which is the scent that connects to to us as a, as a human that, you know, make it. And it's, a, and it's a strong branding element it's as well. It's a very right? strong <laughs> element. Because yeah. if you go in some stores nowadays, everyone is adding a scent on the store just for it to get in the, the store and then you feel, yeah. you know, the smell. But it's not actually <clears throat> the product. It's just the environment of some of the retailers they are putting a little of scent. But in your case, is the is the product? It was very early. Very I think in the brand we were, I think Melissa was very lucky on finding like this elements to build like the brand it's in a very genius. early age. Yeah, and very, so, very, very genius. And but I, Grazi, do you think that for a brand, if Melissa was born like today? Do you think do you think it was easier that time to make it happen than today? Because today we have so many other channels and we're talking about yeah. metaverse, NFT, Web3, so many different layers. Do you think it was easier that time to innovate than it is now from a marketing sure. perspective? Well, I think um, it's never easy to innovate, <laughs> really. Yes, it, yeah. it, um, anytime you have challenge. So of course, I understand your point. Today has been a lot of things on the <laughs> brand's checklist yeah. to make sure that they are following. Of course, consumers, they have much more information. Uh, they have many much other data. options and data. And so, of course, it's I understand the challenge right now, but I think uh, 
it has never been easy to innovate and finding like the right way for brands to communicate. There are such different levels of challenge that you face. I think, of course, I think we, Melissa were luck, was lucky to build this such a strong community on that time and make sure that they follow the follow brand the until brand. nowadays because it really makes the brand, made the brand to be strong today and make like in a very good position today in terms of the, the market itself. Uh, so, of course, that is mm, very important. Uh, but there were challenges on that time and I and as Myra mentioned in the 80s talking about a collaboration from a Brazilian brand to an international designer brand who like you wouldn't like, have access they, right like, if you remember the, like, yeah. did you, there's yeah. no internet on that time yeah, yeah. and how uh, do you yeah. That? No, yeah. How, do we, how do you explain who is John Paul Gaultier because yeah. we only had newspapers and magazines, magazines and yeah. radios and TV but the access to international brands were not out there as as it is today. So I think the Definitely. challenge comes. It's always going to be challenged, but there are different challenges in different, through different, different ways, time in different of, levels, yes, yes. In, in, in different levels. And I think I think I don't know. Like they tell the challenge nowadays as well for brands is is because they it, it, things are so global because social media now that it sometimes is like a, it's a make or break, right? Because you have to be super careful as well, how you position, how you talk with your consumers, how we engage with a community, because there's this like, you know, the cancellation kind of, of course, you know, yeah. how do they call it? The cancellation in Portuguese, like a cancelamento yeah. on the internet, right, right? Yeah, the cancellation yeah. on social media, that not just for influencers, but brands that for should the be brands super well. careful, yeah, of right? Course. Of like how you position yourself, you know, how you're talking with the audience, and then especially the new generation when we talk about the Gen Zers. So they really like, because we have the millennials and we have, you know, uh, us like we follow Melissa from, you know, our childhood, but what about the new, power gen zeros that are here they really wanted to understand like what is the material that you're using how you're positioning your brand are we engaged with any social calls so it's a different type of consumer that they look at much more into details before they consume a brand right right and this is why i think we have been working a lot in terms of sustainability and, yes. and i said uh, it has been 10 years already so i think even the sustainability aspect it started very early in the in the company yeah. and and then we feel a little bit more empowered also to talk about the subject and make sure that the people also understand and uh, what we are talking about. So there are different challenges in different years. Yeah. And uh, I think that's it. And I think one thing uh, also that you asked, it, it was regarding how to build a community um, globally, because of course, we, Melissa has this very strong uh, community in Brazil, but what about the the, the international, international markets? Ones. So what we have been doing so far, it's like also trying to connect uh, uh, in a like in different ways but building this community globally so uh, Melissa has done two programs one in, in the US and also another one here in the UK uh, inviting like artists and designers to collaborate nice. with the brand so it was always like a different project but like in a very regular way and a very frequent way so we invited them to build like an art installation in the galleries to build like a special content to invite their own communities to come connect, connect with, the with the brand so um so at least the brand could um introduce herself yeah. and also uh, trying to connect with this different audience it was a very nice experience i think also for uh Building connecting with those globally globe, yes yeah global i saw on your, on your social media on a, on a highlight of your stories especially here in uk that you have done a lot of collaboration with local artists and that goes back to what we were discussing a few weeks ago for south by southwest it's just like for in order for you to become you know a global brand you also need to understand what are the key cultural elements of each market right and engage with you know uh, understand the culture and the niches of uk of us because you can be a global brand but you still need to understand okay but i'm a global but i need to as well like added some you know culture impact yeah. into each market to actually become relevant 
to that specifically market. It's not just about the product, but how to engage the locals, right? And that is very challenging, I think, because I think one thing that is super important is to uh, keep like a very strong brand proposition. Mm -hmm. You need to keep that in like an like a mantra. So mm -hmm. when when I say like yeah. uh, Melissa has these important pillars like fashion, art, and design, we really keep repeating it yeah. like every time to make sure as that a mantra. as a mantra, yes, as, as so making sure that every Every activation that we do, every, um, I mean, marketing communication campaign that we do is connected to one of those pillars. So we can make sure that the core proposition is strong, is still like the way that Melissa is connecting with people. And then you build also the local relevance. So this is why, so, so this important. is why when we talk about like local activations, we look after artists or uh, people that are creating something special, something different, they are somehow connected to the pillars that yes. we know it will build like a conversation around the teams that we are already talking. And that can like give an impulse of the bro to make sure that the brand will connect locally, but it keep like the, the global the global pillars, pillars yeah. and the proposition like very strong. Otherwise, you can get lost because you can get lost 100%. because there are so many different uh, things that the local markets needs and uh, opportunities as well, like in the local markets that you can go through paths that uh, sometimes you look bad, but it, that that is not right for the brand. That is not something that we used to talk about. So so I think keeping like the brand, the proposition, brand the proposition and relevant. making sure that the local activations are connected to your global prop core proposition. I think that makes things easy in when, when taking decisions on how yeah, to how build to. your local o audience. Yeah, because I, I, and I think this is super challenging today because, of course, we have so many trends and the brands want to do it all, want to tap into everything. And that's the thing, like you need the trends need to adapt to your pillars and not the opposite. Yeah, that, right. Yeah. So then when thinking about 100%. marketing strategy, your pillars are strong and you you focus on that. And then the trends come, the, the cultural elements come and you adapt then to to your core values and not the, the other, the way, other way because otherwise as you said you're gonna get lost like if every time you're adapting oh there's a new trend here so let's no, no, no. let's do it you know and yeah, yeah yeah and i think the culture relevance when we bring that nuances into a brand is just when you start creating an impact right within the local within the local community Grazi, I, we could stay here forever <laughs> because I am obsessed. Like, and again, I like for me, it. yes. <laughs> but the thing is like with Melissa, as I said, it's just so amazing like to see that you guys have been doing what everyone is trying to do now and you've been doing that for so long. So it's just like unbelievable, like a great case study for so many brands that are trying to become that relevant, you know, global brand, but that taps into emotional, into connection and engage with communities. So, what is next for Melissa? <laughs> Tell us before we go. A spoiler. Any, yeah, a spoiler. What is next? What is coming? Ah, uh, <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> there are so many things coming up very soon, I think. Uh, well, Melissa has a lot of, uh, I think, challenges still to grow in the markets, but we do have, like, we are expanding in the opening of the store, so we are going to see more uh, Melissa exclusive store globally very soon um i think the the collaborations that we are going to launch this year are very exciting so uh, we have such incredible collaboration we have just launched undercover which also was like yeah, a japanese branch like, uh, yes it was very how did you select who we're gonna collab with so is it more like an organically approach from like brands or you guys do the approach or both both, yeah. Sometimes it's the brands come to us, I and, and like, uh, yeah, so imagine. that is very nice. But sometimes it's like uh, us coming to the brands, the brands that we feel inspired about. So it's always something that happens, like when the brands feel connected. And I think that is very nice because when we find a brand that is totally related to the to the Melissa as well, and it's very powerful. So a lot of interesting collaborations coming this year, and I mean. 
that such incredible oh projects God. come and yes. I can't look look can't look forward looking to see. forward to see it <laughs> yeah but Grazi thank you so much oh, it's so, so valuable much to have you here and, and like listening to you know the story of Melissa and, and knowing that you're part of this for how many years now yeah 15 years in Grandini wow yeah, and so you saw everything Melissa. which is everything this must happened. make you feel really yeah. proud right thank to you. be part of the journey thank you so much for having me it was an incredible pleasure to talk a little bit more about the brand and thank you so much yes, for the invite your pleasure it was amazing. thank you grazi no thank i you. loved it love only amazing memories with melissa and yeah as my said huge fan of the way you guys are doing marketing yeah, it it's, is a benchmark it's definitely an amazing case study yeah inspiration mm -hmm. <laughs> totally. thank you to everyone that's here, thank you so much for, you know, joining us once again on one another incredible episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed our conversation and get to know more about this incredible brand that is Melissa. And if you're not following us yet, please make sure you do on Apple, Amazon, Spotify and YouTube. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Graz, again. Thank you, everyone that's keeping tuning with us. And uh, I see you soon on our next episode. Thank you so much.